General Election 2010. A pillhead, a stoner, a German, or a nerd. You decide. Do you know what Cindy's is? Which what is? Cindy's. Cindy's, what is that? Is it just a nightclub? Oh, I don't know Cindy's, no. And uh, would you know how much a VK is? A VK? So a vodka kick is a sort of student alcohol pop. Oh, okay, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I tend to stick to real ale. Okay. And red wine, actually. Mm -hmm. Vodka kick, not had that yet. My daughter <laughs> probably could help you out on that one, though. Uh, do you know what Cindy's is? No. Do you know what Cindy's is? Uh, yes. It's a nightclub. Have you ever been? Um, yeah, I think I went years ago. Yeah, when I was a student here. Yeah. Um, but it's not. But it's been renamed. Has it? Know it's been re renamed. Uh, I, well, I, you know, I forgot. I, forgot. I, forgot. I was in there recently. I was in there when I was out with the street pastors. Um, if you said the name, I would remember. But at the top of my head, I can't. Remember. I, I was in there the other day. The street pastors in a high visibility yellow jacket, standing in the middle of the dance floor, looking a complete prat. But I wasn't there. <laughs> and do you know what, what what price of VK would be? Uh, no, I've never. No. I, do you know? I've never drunk VK. I, do you know what Cindy's is? <laughs> I do indeed. I've been there many times. Uh, a number of years ago when I was a student, I actually booked out the whole place for, for a night. I don't know if they still do this, but you could actually at the time book the whole thing, charge whatever you liked for entry. They gave you the money that they took. They kept the bar profits. Um, so we had a fantastic evening. That was really good fun. Uh, and we made a profit out of it as well. So I do know Cindy's very well. You do think you can win? Oh, yes, absolutely. What the Green Party offers is, is a genuinely fresh voice in, in politics. And, you know, yes, there is a emphasis on, on more social welfare um, uh, uh, policies in a way that look like the left end of the spectrum, but I don't see this as about left and right, left and right. I see this as about a genuinely fresh voice into politics, which is joining up all the things that presently are too disparate in terms of economic recovery, how we're going to achieve social welfare, at the same time as navigating these huge environmental challenges that lie in front of us. Well, leaflet promises to abolish student fees. Yeah. Um, do you think this is really uh, accomplishable in the next few years? Oh, absolutely, definitely. I was a student here when fees came in, I marched against fees. I've been adamant through my entire political life that we shouldn't have them. Um, and so we've got a fully costed proposal to get rid of them and to replace the money for the university so the universities will actually be better off. Now, because the economy is in a mess, we can't do it straight away. So in the first year of a Lib Dem government, we would get rid of final year fees. We would then, over the next few years, gradually make things better, help part-time students, until by the end of six years, all those fees would be gone. The Lib Dems have, uh, have come out very strongly in favour of scrapping student fees. Why, why do your part party not, not support uh, this? The Lib Dems claim they've come out very strongly in favour of scrapping tuition fees. It's a very different policy they're standing on than they stood on at the last election. Um, it's over a much longer time period. It's not completely clear where the money's coming from. Um, my policy is actually um, to listen to the experts a review that is uh, currently underway, and which is due to report very soon. I think it's very bizarre that Lib Dems say they know better than the review of experts, which is due to report very, very soon. Um, you know, I wish we had an answer before the election, but it would be madness to turn that down. Last year, The Telegraph revealed that uh, Anne Campbell, your predecessor in the seat, uh, sold her second home to her son, which, which had been funded by taxpayers' money. Um, do you condone her actions? Well, the, the, first of all, uh, The Telegraph's expose, so-called expose, of MPs like Anne Campbell, I thought was quite disgraceful the way she was pursued five years after she'd left Parliament. What was she supposed to do with that flat, quite frankly? Leave it empty? I mean, she, she in, as far as I can see, entirely obeyed the rules, she did nothing wrong, and in fact, she was entirely open about what she did. So, I think that kind of retrospective view of perfectly upstanding. Uh good public servants like Anne Campbell was quite disgraceful. And actually, the way the Daily Telegraph did that, because um, I've spoken to her about it, with a kind of a letter which arrived sort of at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and being told you had to comment by 5 o'clock and they'd publish it, was a really poor example of the worst kind of journalism. It's been rumoured that you were called Pillman at school for the amount of drugs that you took. <laughs> is, this, is this true? <laughs> no. <laughs> and it absolutely isn't. I can see in the look of your eyes that was going to be a good question, mm. but it absolutely isn't. No, I, I've... Uh, no, I steer clear of all of those sorts of things. I've never, I, I actually think life, uh, I think legal uh, legal things on offer and indeed life is more than interesting enough without taking illegal substances. Uh, what about legal highs? Legal highs. You mean things that are, you don't mean alcohol, you mean sort of drugs.
drugs that are currently legal. Right. I think things like Nihau Nihau, I think they should be illegal, to be honest. I think uh, things that lead, lead to deaths the way those have. I think, um, yeah, I don't have a problem with saying, you know, cr cracking down on those the same way my party has said should happen. Do you support the uh, legalisation of marijuana? Yes, we do. The, the Green Party has quite a clear policy on this. We think that they should be decriminalised and that we should be taking a different approach towards Class A drugs as well in terms of there being uh, more of an emphasis on the health uh, problems rather than seeing it as a criminal issue and giving people assistance in being able to get away from addiction. And have you ever taken drugs? I might have, uh, in the past, um, have dabbled with one or two. I, I've certainly smoked marijuana, and I can see the attraction, frankly. Mm -hmm. Why have you been so keen to uh, dismiss your, your alleged Jewish heritage? Um, I want people to be clear about who I am. And what's interesting is people make assumptions because of my name, that I'm Jewish. I've got nothing against being Jewish, but I just, I'm not. So it's better that people know the truth. Is it relevant? I don't think it is relevant, but what I think is relevant is when you get smears against you which are based not on the truth. And Why would being Jewish be a smear? Well, I tell you, in, the, in previous elections I've had the Conservatives going around saying don't vote for the German, for instance. So I'm, I know exactly how important it is to be absolutely clear with people about your background. When you've got a name like mine, you do have to explain it because people make assumptions. Now, I was born in Beckenham and I have no... That doesn't mean you can't be Jewish. No, of course it doesn't mean I can't be Jewish, but I'm not. But if people assume I am Jewish, they then make judgments by that as well. So I want people to be absolutely clear. I am English and I'm actually an atheist. Um, how much do you think a VK is? Uh, sorry, a VK is... It's a vodka kick, it's an alcohol pop. Uh, I, I have no idea, to be honest. Probably a few quid. What is the answer? If, sort of it's one fifty two pounds. Two twenty. Two twenty. A few quid, a few quid is fair enough. Then. <laughs> Which is more important to appeal to, town or gown? Oh, town. Which do you think is more important, town or gown? Uh, both. Uh, it's absolutely essential to look at both of those. Um, I grew up in Cambridge, as well as having been a student and an academic here. Um, I think I can actually unite both town and gown and bring them together. In a word, uh, which is more important to appeal to, town or gown? Um, oh, I love Cambridge, both aspects of it. You know, I, I grew up in Oxford. I um, went to a university somewhere else in Bristol. I moved to Cambridge later on. I grew up in actually quite a, 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 a modest part of Oxford. My father worked in, in, the, in the factory there, the car factory. So I, I kind of grew up in a city which had, you know, a big influence from a university, but still a big uh, population who weren't directly associated with it. And moving to Cambridge and finding that again, I'm quite comfortable with it. And I really like the uh, opportunity for an MP to be able to join these two things together in a very exciting way for the benefit of both. Why do you sport a goatee moustache? <laughs> Um, I used to have a full beard when I was an undergrad. Um, I shaved that off because it didn't quite look right. Um, I like it. Um, it. It's very convenient. You should try one. The other thing I'd say is I that there, 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 well, <laughs> there, there is a lovely thing that was sent, if you look at my Twitter feed, where somebody found a rating of how trustworthy different beards were. And I was delighted to see that you know, the least trustworthy were, were you know, Hitler moustache and things like that. Right at the very other end was exactly my design. It's one of the most trustworthy beards. So if you believe random things people send on Twitter, then you know, I'm very trustworthy.